Taylor Wilson, my next guest from the Alzheimer's Association South Carolina chapter. That's right. And you're the Director of Communications and Advocacy, and it's hot. It is. It is hot. I had to do my updo. Yes. <laughs> you still have the beautiful long hair, but you have it pulled back, so yeah. It, well, you know, June always brings the heat wave in South Carolina, but it also brings something else. It brings Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. Yeah. So even even if it's a little bit warm, we're still out there uh, trying to uh, fight for a cure to end Alzheimer's, but also to raise awareness because we know that this is a, this is a disease that affects a lot of people. Yes. Now, if you could give us um, a definition, if you would, of Alzheimer's and who it affects, and uh, give us a little bit of background. Sure. So Alzheimer's is actually a disease uh, that is not exactly understood right now. We still need a lot of research to figure out uh, exactly what triggers it, but essentially what it is is your brain is being um, slowly attacked by sticky proteins that stick together and start to create blockages, what we call plaques and tangles in the brain. So the best analogy I can give you is imagine your brain is an azalea and an ivy plant starts to creep into the azalea and starts to wrap around and tighten and kill off branches. It doesn't kill the whole azalea, mm -hmm. but it starts to kill off parts. Uh, and in the cerebrum, that's where a uh, majority of that occurs. So you lose a lot of um, memory, motor function. Uh, you, you, you lose a lot of um, language skills and being able to communicate. Uh, Alzheimer's is a disease that typically uh, affects those 65 or older, but is not an old person's disease. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone who tells me that Alzheimer's is just a natural part of aging, I have to tell them that that's not correct because we all deserve to die with our memories. Uh, and it is a disease that uh, affects someone in a very cruel way because they are still able to function physically but they are not able to maintain their relationships with people. Um, they are not able to connect with the world anymore. So with that being said, it affects uh, anyone with a brain. Right now mm -hmm. we know that there are some genetic risks, but for some families there have been no history of Alzheimer's, and then all of a sudden it occurs. Right. Um, I always say it's a purple issue because it, politically it is bipartisan. It is not bipartisan. blue or red. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone is at risk, and you will know people who have uh, been rich who've had Alzheimer's. Uh, Donald Trump's father actually had Alzheimer's. Uh, and then you'll know people who've been incredibly poor who've had Alzheimer's. There are certain risk factors, like um, if you are at higher risk for stroke and heart disease, you may be at higher risk for Alzheimer's. But then again, there are protective factors, like if you maintain a social, uh, a social engagement into your 60s and you also maintain healthy diet, that might help protect you from some of this. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, we still really don't know a lot about it. We're still in the very early research stages. Uh, Alzheimer's was discovered 115 years ago by Dr. Alzheimer. Uh, and we still don't have a way to treat it 115 years later. And there's more and more cases every year. There's more and more cases every year. Uh, in fact, the CDC just released that uh, there's been a 55% increase in Alzheimer's-related deaths uh, since 1999. And so there is no cure. No cure. When you are diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it is considered a death sentence. Wow. Um, there are individuals who, because it's diagnosed later in life, uh, there are individuals who may not live out the duration of the disease because of comorbidity factors, like if they have cancer, or if they have uh, high stroke risk, heart disease, things like that, they may die before living out the duration of the disease. But if you live out the duration of the disease, it's a very difficult uh, way to pass with your family, um, you know, taking care of you. It's very difficult. Uh, Alzheimer's disease typically um, has a huge effect on caregivers. There are actually 15 million caregivers in the United States. And growing. And growing. There mm -hmm. are 306,000 in South Carolina alone. Wow. Um, and these caregivers are giving 24-hour care with basic daily activities, bathing, cleaning up, going to the bathroom. This isn't your normal caregiving where you show up, you cook mama dinner, and you leave. This is actually walking someone through their day-to-day -day life. Um, a lot of people are actually called what we call the sandwich generation, meaning that they have families at home. 
and they're trying to take care of their their loved one with Alzheimer's. The other thing that I would say is that just because you're young doesn't mean you don't need to start thinking about this. We do see an increase in the number of younger onset Alzheimer's cases every year, which means that these people are younger than uh, than 65. Some of them can be as young as 32. Wow. When you have that level of um, intensity in terms of uh, knowing you're 32 and you have eight years to live, but you're going to slowly ebb uh, in your ability and you don't necessarily have the ability to stop it, it can be very daunting. Yes. Um, so uh, I, there is a lot to be said for why we continue to advocate for research, but also in the same breath, we turn around and we provide care and support. The Alzheimer's Association South Carolina chapter is here to provide education and workshops for free. If you ever want to know um, healthy living for your brain and body, we have that workshop. We have the workshop where for caregivers that says, come in, we'll teach you how to communicate. It's called Effective Communication Strategies, so you can address some poor behaviors with your, with your loved one because as the disease progresses, their personality will change. Mm-hmm. Their ability to uh, connect with you will change, and you may see some frustration. You may see some acting out. Wow. Um, so, yeah, we, we provide those free workshops. We provide support for caregivers and the families. And then we also go in and we try and provide as much research as we can to try and find a cure. Good, good. Now, tell us about some ways that you are uh, uh, doing fundraising and that sort of thing because you, you can't do it alone. That's absolutely true. We have, to, uh, we have to lean on our communities, and we've had a great great start to this year. Uh, We have 21 uh, cities in South Carolina declaring June Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month, including Columbia, West Columbia, and Lexington. Mm -hmm. So we are thrilled to see that our local governments recognize this as an issue. Um, With that being said, in June, you can go purple and learn more about it. Change your profile picture. You can go to facebook.com backslash profile frames uh, and change it to uh, I go purple for alls. Okay. Uh, and it'll link to the website and people can donate there. You can also wear purple throughout the month. Take a selfie and put alz.org into your, uh, your, your social media when you post it. I go purple for alls or go purple. Um, you can also join us for the longest day. And yeah, tell me about this longest day. When is that? So the longest day was actually a movement that was created by a group of caregivers. It is held on the summer solstice every year because that is the longest day. But in reality, the person who has the longest day is the caregiver. And I have been a caregiver, so I can share personally that I would get, I would come home from work, I would get my grandmother dinner, I would get her ready for bed, she would go to bed at 10, 1030, and then as a caregiver, you sit there and you wait. You do laundry, you wait. Is she going to fall? Is she going to get up and not know where she is? Mm -hmm. Is she going to need me in the middle of the night? And so those hours start ticking by. It's four or five o'clock. You finally fall asleep. And then it's time to get up and and go to work. And Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. caregivers truly have the longest day. So someone thought, why not do something to honor those families facing this disease on the longest day of the year? Um, So you can sign up for the longest day and say, I'm going to go and do yoga all day. (laughs) Uh, and, and that's cool. Or you can say, you know, I'm going to make fidget aprons, which really help, um, those facing dementia to get rid of some anxiety. It's just, you know, ribbons and buttons and things for them to play with. Okay. And it's on an apron. So it ties around them so it doesn't fall and they don't fall over trying to pick it up. Um, you can spend the day with us. There's a couple of different things that are going on around town. Um, there is a powder puff football game behind Crafty Drafty uh, in Lexington. There is um, a concert series out at Foxfield Grill um, that's going to have, I think, four bands. And they're playing. You, you pay a cover charge at the door, and it goes straight to the Alzheimer's Association. Uh, we've got all kinds of stuff happening. So you can go to thelongestday.org, type in your town. And find out what's happening near you. And you can sign up with someone else or you can start your own team. That's right. You can you can join somebody else's team or you can start your own. If you really enjoy baking cookies and want to take them to a facility after you're done, 
sign up and be, you know, Team Betty Crocker. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of those are options. Uh, but we do we do recommend that uh, if you're going to do the longest day, that you uh, you get creative, but don't don't get intimidated. It can be as big or as small as you want it to be. All it is is raising awareness and also helping to promote the idea that we can fight this together. This is about doing something you love for someone you love, uh, and it's it's just a really great day. So I'm excited about the longest day. It's June 21st this year. It's a Wednesday, so if you can't do something on a Wednesday because of a job, pick a Saturday in June. Pick a Sunday in June, okay. um, and but still sign up for the longest day. The, the 21st is not set in stone. What is is that you're dedicated to helping us fight this disease. All right, Taylor, we're going to have to have you back on again because, I mean, um, June is, is a long month. It is a long month. But there's so many more questions that I could be asking you about Alzheimer's and more of the services that you provide. Absolutely. But for now, um, give everyone your website once again and a phone number that they can get in touch with you. Absolutely. So we have a 24-7 helpline that's available all hours of the day, seven days a week, even on holidays. It's staffed in 81 languages and trained individuals who are there to help you address resource issues, um, behavior issues, everything else. So call this hotline. It is an amazing opportunity to get the help you need. Um, It's going to be one 800 272-3900. So that's 1-800-272-3900. And if you want to find out more about what's happening in South Carolina with the South Carolina chapter, you can visit alz.org backslash sc. And for the longest day. And for the longest day, visit thelongestday.org. And you can type in your town and find out what's happening near you. Or if there's nothing going on, make something happen yourself. All right. Thank you so much, Taylor. Appreciate it.